Yeah. Good evening, Zoning Board of Appeals, Town of Canaan. Today is February. What's the second? Fifth, February fifth. I'm three days off. Today's February fifth. Um, and Zoning Board of New Canaan will come to order at seven p.m. Explain how it works. When we call your case, we ask that each presenter come up to the lectern, identify himself or herself, and the property in question. State the request of the board. Identify the hardship and the reason for the request. Remember that the hardship cannot be financial in nature. It must run with the land and is peculiar to your property. The board will then ask questions of you, after which you will sit down and we will give those present a chance to speak. You will then be given an opportunity to answer any questions or sum up your request. We record the meeting so everyone must speak into the microphone and state their names. The only microphone up here working like this one. The board will then go into business session, discuss, and make a decision. There are five voting members on the board, and it takes four affirmative votes to be granted a variance. I'm going to take attendance, and we're going to add something to our agenda. Okay. Um, Luke Tashin. Present. Jessica Cardin. Present. Rich Caratu. Present. Cynthia Dole. Present. Christy Bonner. Present. And Brittany Singer. Present. So we're going to amend the agenda to add to it appointment of officers. Just need a motion. Um, anyone want to um, make that motion? One second. I'll make that motion. Okay. Second. All in favor? <laughs> I Everyone in favor? Okay. <laughs> Well, it's nice to meet all of you, or maybe some of you, but it's nice to meet all of you. Thank you for your service to the town. I really appreciate it. Um, it's an important board for the community. So thank you all for all you do. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to be running officer elections this evening. And um, if we could start with, are there any nominations for the office of chair? Yeah. Uh, yes, I'd like to nominate Jessica Cardon. Um, I think she's got the qualifications, <laughs> the knowledge, and the demeanor um, to be chair of the committee. Okay. Do you have uh, any other nominations? Yep. Rich Carey, too. I like to nominate Luke. Okay. All right. So we have two nominations. Any other nominations? Okay. Um, so all those in favor of Jessica Cardin as chair of the Zoning Board of Appeals, please raise your hand. So you said clarify, I don't think alternates can vote. Oh, oh, right, no alternates. So who's, I don't know who the alternates are. I don't have the list in front of me. So That's we cannot. The two of you are, okay. So Jessica and Sophia, okay. Oh, well, and then <laughs> um, yes. for in, uh, Luke, uh, so who's voting for Luke? We have Rich and Luke, so we are tied. <laughs> <laughs> um, so does that mean I break the tie? I believe so. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's good to have a little heads up here. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome to. <laughs> um, well, uh, so Luke is the seated chair currently. He's a temporary chair. Oh, he is. Um, we haven't had a chair since May. Since chair May, chair yeah, a long time. Uh, I don't have the list of the committee. Um, okay. Hold on, I can go on my phone really quickly. I think. I have the list on my iPad. Do you? Okay. So we still, we're missing a, um, a, like we don't have the fifth regular number off the moment. That's oh, because I just seated someone. Um, he was, yeah, you seated an alternate, but we don't have a regular Well, number. one of the alternates will be yeah, moved yeah. up once. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, um, yeah. yeah. I thought this was like automatic. We <laughs> never had like an actual vote on this. I don't think. I think it'll be fine. Yes, 
Sorry about that. Oh, no problem. I didn't know we were going to have a exciting. <laughs> the most exciting you've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to be voting for Lou for chair. So um, three to two, and um, we'll. This was, uh, there. So now we need the secretary. Well, this was a little surprise, and that we've always been like non political, and we've always voted together on almost every application. Okay. But the secretary usually moves up into chair after, and I would nominate um, Jessica if she wants to be the secretary. I politely, respectfully decline just with my working professional okay. obligations. Okay. I know you have to get things signed. Okay. And that might okay. be challenging. Okay. okay. So, so I'd like have... to nominate Cynthia if you're so willing to. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I would second that then. Okay. All right. Um, do I have any other nominations besides Cynthia for chair? You mean secretary? So, uh, sorry, yeah. secretary. Sorry, uh, already. Um, yes. So any other nominations? Okay. All those in favor of Cynthia Dahl as secretary? Yes, it's unanimous. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. Wow. <laughs> Outside of Grace Farms, it's the most contentious thing we've done here. <laughs> Outside of Grace Farms, it's the most contentious thing we've handled. Much less exciting application. <laughs> Have a good night. Bye. Nice meeting all of you. Okay. So, um, <laughs> first item on the agenda today 65 Wood Ridge Circle, zoning variance upon application David Rucci, Land Part 2 in Rucci, authorized agent for Brendan McBride, owners for a variance of section 3.5.8.3 to allow a constructed yes. pool to be located 31 feet from the rear yard setback in lieu of 35 feet. In the two acre zone at 65 Woodbridge Circle, map 27, block 25, lot F73. Thanks. So, who's a regular? So, um, either Christy or Brittany has to be. We're still up, we're both alternate. Yeah, so, who's seated? Did, you, did both of you get to visit the property? No? She did. Okay, so why don't you sit for this one then? Thank you. Okay. Did we receive the mailing receipts? Yeah. I don't know why I did that. What was the hardest part? Uh, stressful, too. Uh, I know. This just happened to me the other day. I got it right like six times in a row. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, David Rucci, I'm Rucci. Uh, here this evening um, representing uh, Brendan McBride um, and uh, their property at 65 Woodbridge Circle. So here's a picture of the property just from the front of the street. You'll notice that the building in and of itself, the property is kind of sit far back, sits really far back from the curvature on Woodridge Circle. So it kind of creates this huge front yard and not so much of a, a, a backyard. Here's kind of as you come into the driveway, uh, you'll see this at the edge of the garage. And then this is looking back from the front of the house to the actual street itself. So you see there's sort of this 180 or so feet to the corner of the curvature of Woodridge Circle. Here's as you come through the back and you're seeing this pool that's the subject of the application this evening. Uh, this lot was initially part of um, a subdivision. Um, you'll see it's lot number 10 on the on the sheet in front of you. And you'll see how this stone wall kind of meanders along this back property line. And the reason I bring that up is that was one of the issues that we ran into this particular piece of property. Um, here's a picture of the pool itself. It's about 30 
one feet away from uh, 31 feet in lieu of 35 feet. You'll see this corner of about 21 square feet has actually uh, been built over the setback line. So the town planner's done a good job of going through sort of what's happened in the past on this particular piece of property. Um, unfortunately, what happened was that um, a pool contractor was hired uh, with other work that was being done on the property. The McBrides um, basically said, this is where we want to place our pool. We want to put it somewhere in the back of, of the property, uh, somewhere close to the back of our, where we can come out. We can see everything from the pool. It's not going to be to the side or anywhere like that. Can obviously be in the front um, or it's difficult to put it in the front yard um, without going as well to get a special permit. Nobody really wants to have their pool sitting in the front yard. So they found this location in the back of the piece of the property. Um, it's your standard like 20 by 42 foot pool. And when they installed it, they didn't think much about it. Um, there was an issue with the septic, which you can see over here. Uh, the pool was actually built too close to the septic. And it turned out that the contractor who built the pool had done so without a permit. So there was no permit for this pool when it was constructed at the time that it was constructed. Unbeknownst to our clients, the pool permit had not been actually sought or received. Um, it turns out when they were looking at the septic area itself, the, the town was like, well, we need a survey. We need to see where everything is. This is the first time that the survey actually disclosed that this pool was over the line. And that became a separate issue for the client. He had a septic David, issue. so yeah. chronologically, they yeah. built the pool and then they built a new septic, you're saying? They did have to eventually end up moving their septic, yes. But how did this, this issue come to light then? Um, the issue in and up, the pool itself came to light because the septic, they built it too close to the septic. But how did so the septic come to light? It came to light because there was um, a, their um, fuel tank contractor submitted a permit for a fuel tank for a pool heater and um, the health department staff flagged that it looked like this, when you submit for like a, a, a tank like that, you just, you draw a plan, like it doesn't have to be formal and the health department admin um, flag that the drawing seemed too close to the septic system, so they sent out an inspector and they found the pool. So the town realized that there was an issue at that point. That's how it all came about. Yeah, correct. That's all I read. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, um, David, I mean, this is kind of surprised me. Someone build a pool without checking to see if the contractor pulled the permit. I mean, I understand like um, putting new windows on your house or a roof or something. Like sometimes it's great, like what needs a permit, what doesn't, but. But I'll let Mr. McBride talk. Yeah, so, so there's two two pieces here. One, we did two construction projects at the same time. One from Latcher Development, which was an extension and renovation of the house. All of those permits, as far as we're aware, were filed. They were done on, on time. It, it was built within code. We were told at the same time by the contractor who's building the pool that they had also done the same. And we took him on the face that he was doing that. We weren't told that anything was uh, any different. I asked multiple times and he reaffirmed that we are okay with the town. That clearly wasn't the case. It was a, a lie on multiple occasions, but other than me, like physically turning up at the town and saying, has this person who we have paid to contract on this job filed a permit? When again, we had built the pool, we had inspectors on site, like all of this was happening at the same time. Like this wasn't, there wasn't like a three year gap. All of the, all of the contracting, all of the work was happening at exactly the same time. So, so when they were coming to inspect the building yeah. construction, they didn't notice a pool was being put in too? So I, I reviewed the um, timeline on that this morning. And so in our um, system, all of the inspections for the addition began in summer of 2022 in like June, July, August. And we discovered the pool in May of 2022. So the, Everyone was already aware that the pool existed without a permit by the time the inspection started. And when was the initial um, construction project submitted? The plan for a permit there for the the addition? extension, yeah. So it was issued in January of 2022. So it's probably submitted in November or December. I mean, that's a surprising aspect. What was that, that date again? What were you, at? you repeat it, your question, just so I'm. Typically, we've seen people who have this mindset of we're going to do the extension and pool near concurrent in time, mm -hmm. and they will submit a plan that shows everything for one approval. Yeah. And so if you already knew you were doing the extension plan, did you at that time already know you're doing the 
pool and why wasn't the people who did your like why wasn't there one plan submitted so, so just to clarify you do need separate permits for the structures and no no i know separate and, permits but yeah. usually i mean we've seen it where it's drawn in yeah we, you know on one plan ones. just yeah. to save costs yeah. right yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's we, a good we point. We had years no, all. multiple recommendations. We had used Jim Cascatino as our architect. We had used Stephen Metcher as our builder. And we'd used Signature Pools, all of who have done work in the town. At no point in any of this did anybody suggest to us that it would be in your interest to file everything together. Like, if I could show you the plans for the house, and it shows a pool. Like, there's a pool there. Like, when the survey work was done and submitted, I don't know what, like, again, I'm not an expert. I pay people to do this work and we contract them and we believe that they're competent in what they do. And two of the three were competent in what they do. And a third was not. This was also, you know, started, finished in the middle of, uh, in the middle of COVID. I don't know how easy or otherwise it was to get into the town to do what he needed to do. The reality is he didn't do it, but he told us that he did on multiple occasions through engineering, through survey work, through, every other component piece. And it was only until, and again, unbeknownst to us, the as-built survey was submitted to the town. I'd never seen it. So clearly, like if I'd seen it, we would have addressed it proactively with the town. I get a call from Sarah that says, you're in violation of the setback on the pool. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I haven't seen this as-built plan. Moody and O'Brien submitted it on our behalf without our approval. And again, I don't, have any issue with the sequence of events, like the pool is out of compliance. That's an issue that we're trying to address. But throughout, and again, like I have like 12, 20 pages of text messages between me and the contractor, where at least 25 times I have asked him, send me the permits, show me what you've done. And I get a response saying, it's done, it's with the town. And this was in the middle of the summer of 21 and, and throughout the start of 22. I mean, I guess I have a, some issues with the whole timeline because it seems like, I mean, look, Luke and I are lawyers, so I think maybe if I had gotten no response, I'm going to just contact the town myself and ask, why is there an issue here? You know, my contractor says it's in. Well, again, there was no and, issue flagged. I'm, like, I had been on top. Of but it sounds my... like around that time, and sorry to interrupt, but I wasn't finished, um, that it might have been flagged around that time by the town if it, if you're saying it was around so June not, 2021. So my understanding is it was constructed in summer of 2021. The pool. It, it, it was it was started when it was pinned in August of, of 2021. 2021. Okay. It wasn't dug. It was framed and pinned in August. Okay. It wasn't dug until December, and then okay. it wasn't plastered until May. And Again, May the only piece on the timeline that I'm trying to establish yeah. is that the point at which the town had notified to us throughout that prior period before the town had told us about a permitting issue I had requested from the contractor multiple times proof that he had filed the permits what was the the last pool we had what company was that swim pools, swim pools. Yes. I mean this it, was the, flagged by the health department yeah. though in May 2021 2022 22 okay I'm sorry the, I was the, the somehow in my pool. mind in, in, in okay in, All right. they in the past they when you've had we issues the contractor and we're like listen we're showing this is showing that there's an issue with this with the setback and he's like no no, no there's no issue with the setback i measured it ourselves i'm like but moody and o'brien is saying that there's an issue with the setback it's showing that we're three feet short he's like no no, no 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 they're measuring wrong they're measuring to the stone wall and our client owns the stone wall i was like oh okay great so if that was the case we would, if we had owned the actual stone wall, we wouldn't be needing a variance. But then, you know, Brian's like, no, you measure to the center of the stone wall. And so there, we're going through these months where the contractor's telling us that, no, 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 it's, I've measured to it, it's fine. And we're, and, you know, don't worry about it. And then we get RKW, I call it RKW because they had done actually the house behind um, the McBride's house, the Schlimm's house. And they were like, no, 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 Moody and O'Brien's right. Everything's to the center of the wall. So that's when we really knew that, you know, the contractor kept telling us that I've measured it. They're wrong. They've gone out there and we were trying, we were telling Sarah the same thing. Like, listen, we think that there's a problem with the, with the stone wall, like where they're measuring to, you know, sometimes you never know. It's sometimes the property line is to the front of the stone wall. Sometimes you own the stone wall. Sometimes it's to the center of the stone wall. This one was to the center of the stone wall. So that actually created this longer timeline 
we were trying to get that information done. And then the second uh, piece that I wanted to bring up is that we then went to the neighbor in the rear, the Schlims, and we were like, listen, can we just do a property line exchange with you guys? I mean, we need like three feet. This wall already meanders kind of along the line. It's not like a straight line. And at first they were sort of receptive to it. And they were like, yeah, we think we're gonna do it. We told Sarah, listen, we think we got this thing straightened out. You know, thanks for your patience. And they were great. Like they were patient with us. They were trying, they knew it was an issue and we had an issue. And they also knew that the contractor that we were dealing with had other issues in town. And this was not something that was specific to us or to our client. So they were great trying to work with us. And then all of a sudden, like at the last minute, the neighbor in the back was like, yeah, I'm not gonna do a property line. And attorneys advised me that it's not a, a good idea if I have to sell and the line's not exactly the same. And I don't really understand that at all. I do lots of property lines with exchanges in my practice. And the only thing that's a hassle is trying to get the banks to sign off on them, but that happens. So we were really surprised at that. So that actually created an additional, I don't know, three months probably before we got that particular answer done. And then we had, all, and the only reason I'm giving this time on because it's a long time between 2021 and where we are today. And I wanna make sure that you guys understand, it's not like we were doing nothing about it. And then the last part of it um, was that we really wanted to get the violation that we had for the septic. We had a violation on the septic. Mm -hmm. We had a violation on the drainage policy because of where they put the pool. And we had to move the septic and we had to put a new drainage policy in. So we waited to get all those things done prior to coming here because we didn't want to be sitting here with not only a violation of you know a setback issue, but also these two other items. And, and that was kind of a miscommunication between myself and, and town staff, because I thought actually that would be the best thing to do is to come in here without anything else going on. But, um, you know, I think they were a little disappointed that we didn't act right away when our property line exchange kind of fell through. So in the past, when we've had issues with pools. Yeah. We've had the pool contractor show up and explain to us what happened. Up. He's, listen, there's, well, I think to be very clear, like there's, a likely litigation between me and him. I would prefer him not to be in the room, to be honest. I, I, I think it's pretty clear that he was in flagrant violation of one contract he signed with me, and then two, what his what his obligations were to you, the town. So I, I don't know him standing here and saying, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. I got, I'm, I'm just not. And is this the pool coping or the pool structure? I mean, the coping's part of the structure. Is this? It's from the inside edge out, so it's from the water out. It's the coping. It's, it's the coping. The coping's over. And that's what bumped it from being but sort of thirty-three. To I think there is also thirty-one. A it's slight like the, edge of the. That's what I'm asking. Is the water over or just the coping? It's both. It's right. It's about twenty-one square feet. I mean, I'm trying to highlight it here on the screen. Um, and I'm sorry that something happened with the copies. It's very hard to see on the copy because I gave you these these upper things, but it's about twenty-one square feet. It's a little bit of water on the side here. So it's not like an issue we've seen in the past where some contractors aren't aware that a new cane and a coping counts as the pool. And no, not like, like the one that we had on that. No, that was- It that sounds was, like the error was partly with the wall. It was the whole thing. Measuring Yeah, it. for him but measuring but the wall. Also like the only other in my mind to try to resolve is obviously if it had come before us to seek a variance and that process before constructed, you know, a pool isn't a necessary use of your land typically. It, you know, it's one that is fairly customary in this town, but we probably would have advised you if that was the intended placement that a smaller pool would fit without a variance. And so that is one thing I'm struggling with um, when there is, there would have been space for a smaller pool. It's hard to find a hardship. Here. Or you could move the pool or, I mean, it's, it's, there's no alternative to moving the pool. The advice that we've given is that it has to be demolished and rebuilt. No, I'm saying when it was originally built. Yes, for yeah. sure. It could have been in a slightly different yeah. location. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think that's the challenge. It could have been a little different angle. It could have, if, I mean, so we, I mean, as your attorney has said, I'm sure he's advised you are, Current a variance, we have to find a hardship that runs with the land. Yeah, I understand that. I mean, the, the hardship that we're presenting today is actually the location of this house and what sits on the property since it's back up, up into against this corner. 
And there's no doubt in the two things that you just said that yes, a pool could have been smaller and a pool could have been set back literally a foot and it wouldn't have made a darn difference to this applicant. Um, and yes, if we were going for a variance ahead of time, we probably would have discussed this and said, no, let's just forget about going for the variance, even though your house does sit in this particular location. Um, and we'll go, you know, and just build a sh smaller what happened. Have you we're not in that, we're not in that position right now. Have you spoken with engineers about the, or other pool companies about the possibility of shortening the pool? Yeah, it's not possible. So they can't like build a wall and no, because apparently the rebar that sits within the concrete uh, wall, if you take it apart, you can't guarantee the uh, the structure. So the advice that we've been given is you have to demolish it, and then you would have to rebuild it at a cost of half a million dollars. So this area here, um, you know, looking for other pool locations. Had we come in here ahead of time. We, yes, while we could have made it potentially a little bit smaller, we wouldn't have wanted to put it to the side of the property because like I said, this looks right out onto Woodward Circle. So you'd essentially be looking directly at the pool, even though it's not technically in the front yard, just the way the curvature of this road is, everything sees right into this area right here. And I can just show you a couple pictures for those of you who were not, did not get out to the property. But so here's sort of where the pool is now, looking out into Woodward Circle wouldn't have wanted to move it into this area because like I said, it's looking onto the street right here. I think it would have encroached on where the septic would have had to be moved to. And well, that's the other thing. The septic did end up having to be moved and it ended up going into that particular spot. Well, you could have rotated the pool. Listen, yes, there's other, there was other options to do the rotation. I mean, we can't with a straight face argue here that, you know, there wasn't a potential other location for this pool. All we can do is talk about the hardship that we do have today based on what's been already built. Um, we have two steps, reasonable necessary use yeah. and a hardship. Reasonable necessary use on a pool. I mean, well, you've granted a variance for a pool before, so I don't know if you want to- uh, That's not that presidential, argument. that's like unique. I mean, that's a hard argument to make. You know, the, how, why, why, do you, why do you need a pool? for reasonably, reasonable use of your house? Well, I mean, pools, tennis courts, paddle courts, I mean, these are not things that are unfamiliar with the compound in New Canaan. And that is what New Canaan really has become, is a place where people have their compounds. They have their pools and they have their paddle courts. And, you know, I think you can make the argument that maybe not necessary in the sense that we would use that word literally, but it has become something that has created property values for many people here in New Canaan. And it's allowed people to use their property the way they want to use their property. I mean, it's from purely, uh, you know, uh, this is my property. I want to be able to use it. Um, well, you know, I mean, people can do that, but they can't pull the, you know, anything on the property they want. No, the, only, the only thing that I would say is, is, is reasonable in this particular case is, and not getting back to whether it could be a foot shorter or whether it could be rotated a certain place, but having the pool in this particular spot is a smart place to have it based on the fact that it's very close to the back of the house. You can see through the kitchen windows, you know, you can watch things of this particular pool so it can become really a part of the house and the use of the house itself. And I think that is important, not only from a safety perspective, but also from the use of the property. I mean, most people, like I said, don't want to put their pools so far away some do but most of them want them to be close to the house so they can utilize that pool and that space um here's a picture of the pool itself here's this corner that we're talking about um it's 10 square feet over this is the property line of the schlims uh it's it's dense you can see the stone wall is not really it's kind of falling apart a little bit here um Here's a picture looking back once again at that property line where we're requesting for relief, which is this 21 square foot of this corner that I'm pointing to on, with the cursor right now. And this is actually what the what the stone wall looks like now. Um, it's approximately 100 square feet, I'm sorry, 100 feet from the actual back of the residence, back of the patio of uh, Shillin's property. And as I said, we have gone to the the neighbors, this is the, the most 
um, the neighbor who has uh, the closest to it and the one that we initially requested property line exchange with. And um, just says, you know, we're writing express full support for their request. Brides have come to us to explain this unfortunate situation they've been put in by their contractor. And we feel the only reasonable remedy at this point is for them to um, look to grant a variance. It's a small cut overage distance and we have no objection to the current location and generally hope that they are granted a variance. Um, another neighbor also in support. Um, we have three neighbors that uh, are in support of it. David, could the shed that's, I guess it's probably grandfathered in, but it's in the setback area, could that be potentially moved so that it's no longer yes. out of compliance? Uh, so yes, we can move that shed if that. Uh, so, David, you I mean, reduce a violation on the property. So, the. Um, Unusual hardship, you know, you have two tests, the confiscation test, which we almost never see. I think I've seen that once or twice, but there's no use of the property at all if they don't get the variance. And the second is the exceptional difficulty test where you can't reasonably use your property if, you know, you don't get you're in the variance. That usually involves something unique to the property, the shape, the topography, ledge, something like that that runs with the land. I mean, I guess in the other thing, I guess we've done to create some room in the past is if they're going to make it more, not more conforming. That's obviously something that weighs in favor of granting the variance. And I think that's what Jessica's hinting on here. I think we did that with another application where it was after the fact. And to be clear, that shed was there when we purchased the property in 2017. So if that helps with it. No, it's just the intent of zoning is that over time, properties become more compliant, not less compliant. And also, if you're doing something that would make it more compliant, I mean that that, would, that, that that's that supports helps support an application. Yeah, that would certainly we can certainly be more than willing to uh, make the property more conform by removing the shed or at least bringing it in within the setbacks themselves. Um, and it, you know, and with with the pool with this type of pool about thirty one feet away, you know, not a trade off per se, but something that makes it more conforming. Face the location of the corner of that pool. I think it'd also be important that, I mean, you've represented several times that um, it was essentially a mistake that the that um, the permit wasn't filed uh, and you asked for it, but there's nothing, there's no evidence that actually shows that you were asking the question and they were responding. Oops. So, I text message. Yeah, I think it would be useful if we're going to consider um, granting the variance to have that as part of the record sure. so that if it's referred to later, it's absolutely clear that you did take those steps to try to yeah, make sure that- I have, I have an individual timeline of every single time I asked him plus every text message that we have ever exchanged. But you never went to the town. You just kept going to the contractor. No, so if you, if you said, again, just to reiterate that same point. So if you separate the two timelines from when the town notified me, Right. It, all I'm trying to suggest is that is not the point at which I started asking about a permit. It's the time preceding that. I had asked multiple times about a permit and about engineering works and about zoning. And I was told on multiple occasions, it's done, it's in hand. Now, there's an no, argument. I understand that. I'm saying, but before that, you didn't go to the town. I, I, I had moved out from the city. I was born in Ireland. I don't necessarily understand all the rules. I accept that I have an obligation to understand them. Mm -hmm. I had paid a contractor a lot of money. And at the same time, I had two contractors plus an architect. And I asked him the question that I thought was reasonable. And he gave me an answer that I thought was supportive. Now, the last step was me marching down to the town and verifying the answer. Trust would verify, it, of course. I didn't do that. But at no point did my architect say, you should double check this, who we also paid for servicing around all of the contractual work or the uh, the building contractor who did the renovations and construction on the house to suggest in a good faith basis, you shouldn't just accept that answer. It essentially had to be tripped up by the town, which is incredibly unfortunate and obviously something that I would wish that I had avoided by walking down to the town. I paid this guy a lot of money to, and multiple other contractors to be experts to do that for me. And they told me that they did. And so I, it was the architect and the contractor who were looking at building the pool and brought in 
No, the, the architect contractor. and the contractor were solely just for the house. Okay. We contracted the pool separate, which was a mistake, 100% okay. a mistake, but all recommended each other. Right. I, I don't think for purposes of whether or not we can grant or not grant a variance, whose fault this is, Agreed. matter. I don't think your texts matter. I think I'd rather not have them being in the record. I mean, if you're going to be in a lawsuit with him, what you, you do with in that is up to your attorney and him. But I don't see how that would, I mean, our our grounds for granting a variance has to be something related to the property. Right. Yep. Regardless of whether your situation is sympathetic or not, yep. um, why we try to be sympathetic towards people in town, because we live in the town, we're a collegial board, you know, we all have kids, things like that. Fault and it is not something that I, I think is particularly relevant in our analysis. I think the best point is Jessica's point she had about making it more compliant. There might also, it looks to me based on, there's a slight gradation around your patio that was constructed based on how the stairs had to be built in to kind of lower it down. And it would seem to me that perhaps potentially, yeah, that's the picture I've been looking at mm -hmm. as well, that the placement of the pool perhaps mm -hmm. might've had to be placed mm -hmm. at least that distance from the patio to be somewhere flat. I mean, it doesn't it's fully be, resolve I think it's the be. fact that there are dimensions that <laughs> could have been yeah. shorter. I mean, the lot is about as it's flat pretty, of a lot as yeah, I've ever seen. Pretty, I mean, you're not, it's it's, you're going to have a hard time I'm finding a I'm just trying to find something. <laughs> as far as them contracting separately, and I asked Brendan about that, something we about that earlier, it was like, you know, listen, he goes, this guy had built the pool for my for my boss. He built both my friends. He, I mean, he built a lot of pools. And he didn't think twice about it, you know, he's like, and, and by the way, you know, this person, I was talking to my partner about this earlier. He's like, yeah, that guy bought Bill, you know, Bill Michael, you know, well, um, like, like so, I'm saying, I don't think fault is let's try to stay away from it here. So I do want to actually talk this through for a second, because I think the only reason we're considering this is because there's, there's a problem here with the contractor. And I don't, I, don't, I think that mm -hmm. people will bring this up later mm -hmm. as precedent. I know that they're not supposed to, but I think they will. And if we don't say why we're even considering this, then I think that's an issue. It's an after the fact well, request. The, if, the, if it's Rich was, too. the only reason why I think we are considering if there's some mitigation with the shed, I mean, I think that yeah. is a good idea. That 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 really is. And then you got the swing set and I also, think, but you know, the, right. I, I would think. looked in this room and they said there wasn't, the, the contractor had, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know what the scenario would be, but if the, con if the contractor wasn't at fault and they came in here and just asked for permission to have the pool, I think that we really probably wouldn't even entertain it. You know, the, if they just came in, they had never pulled the permit, they'd never even tried, then I think right. it would be a different well, I, issue. Yeah, yeah I, I, I appreciate that. Um, obviously, that's, you know, a part of this, and that's something that we wanted to explain is sort of. A, a, as a global matter, um, but in the end, you know, as this commission knows, and, and we appreciate that part of it, you know, in the end, yes, we do have to find something that's that's a hardship on the property itself, and and bringing all those things in, you know, you used to be able to actually, you used to be able to get variances when an architect made a mistake or a surveyor mistake, and, and they don't allow that anymore, so that's actually been specifically ruled out as something, so, but nonetheless, it's it is a part of, of our story, right? Um, and you know, to Ms. Cardone's uh, point and to Ms. Tashin's point, you know, yes, the the grading is something that we could have looked at a little bit differently, and maybe that's something that would have uh, assisted assisted in the pool getting a variance today. And also, yes, if we remove that shed, the board in the past has looked favorably on the property becoming more conforming. And that's certainly something that um, the McBrides are willing to do. So I think I would just leave it at that as far as from, from a hardship perspective. Um, and then the reasonable use of the property is, as I kind of said earlier, with the pool and its location, you know, this is really is a good location for this particular pool, albeit three feet too far over on one particular place. But in general, it's a, it, it is a good location for it. So um, you know, we think that is reasonable for that to be in that particular situation. So I appreciate that. Um, I think in the past, when we've looked at these after the fact, we've always looked at it 
And I think that's what you kind of what you were hinting at is we've always looked at it as if you came in on day one, would we grant it? I mean, I, I think from a standpoint of encouraging compliance, you know, we have to look at it, you know, we can't reward someone for coming in after the fact. You know, it has to be, would we have granted this? Like they're saying on day one, like, is there a condition that allows us to grant under the law? And would we have granted it if if all these negative things didn't happen? Well, I'm not suggesting we, we don't consider that as well. I'm suggesting the only reason we're looking at it to begin with is because it's there's a mistake. And then on top of that, there still has to, we still have to comply with um, the requirements. I look at this one as, Another one though, even if things had been for the different contractor and because it is just the corner and a few feet over, right? So you're looking for four feet in variance. It's one of those things where if the contractor you did hire under a same type of circumstances, different set of facts, different um, contractor, always thought it was that distance to the full bit of stone wall even if you thought this was being placed completely perfectly, you might have had an after the fact need for a variance. It's tight. Um, yeah, it's tight. So it's one of those things where I could see a scenario where someone had it contracted, didn't actually think they needed to come to the board for a variance because they thought based on the measurements it'd be fine. And they'd be in that same situation that we just reviewed where there was the concern where they thought in one town they didn't need to measure and include the coping, and then this one, you know, in our town they do. So I think in that circumstance, though, you would have had the building permit application ahead of time with the plans and things, and they would have caught it. Yeah, I mean, then. it's possible, but I think they had that same situation with that one where because they had the coping, and I don't know if the building plans would have noticed with the stone wall if the measurements were inexact or not. I mean, in that situation, they probably would have recommended just shorten it by a couple right. feet and. Right. Unfortunately, we can't make that recommendation right now. So, yeah, is this shed the one, the gray picture, the same one on the plan, or is it two sheds? No, it's just one. I mean, that it, it, it's a small change from, from the standpoint of making things more compliant with zoning over time, getting rid of a huge shed that's not very nice looking. Or just moving that's, it elsewhere yeah. that's on your property that's in the setback. That's in the setback. And I mean, if they if they could do that, I mean, that probably is a somewhat portable structure. I don't know. Well, it, well it, it, at this point, it'd probably be it, torn down. Yeah, it's well, and it I is, rebuild it. Yeah. I got one that makes sense to put it, and it is completely outside the setback. So yeah, we'd be bringing it in to compliance, which would be you know a major. I think on the plan, yeah, for a go forward basis, that would be a substantial because here's your setback uh, line. Non-conformity right that would help. If this came to me ahead of time and said we need three feet on our pool or whatever, we would, we would say that. And, and and they say, and they say we will get rid of this enormous shed that's in the setback, like five feet from the property line. We would I we mean would we've done that before. Favor. We yeah. would definitely like say, like, because none of the neighbors are gonna notice the three feet there. Yeah. But they're gonna know. You know, it's a flat pool. It's not elevated. It's not, but they will notice the the shed being gone. Yeah. I mean, it's screened along the wall pretty well too, even in the middle of the winter. But at the end of the, of the day, I mean, I think on day one they would have had a, I mean, a credible position. Yeah, this is this is your screening for the most part. So yeah. then the next question is: Is there going to be other? Things done on the property related to the pool, like a um, the only thing is the pool fence. house or uh, or uh, what do you call it? A cabana, cabana. Cabana. What? How, how would you structure a fence around it? Just where's the fence? Where's the the fence? fence is going uh, all the way across the front of the property, um, from the right hand side to the left hand side, and it's it's on property. I just obviously didn't want to spend the money. To install this and then have to remove it. So Penny Ruchi, can there. you show us where the fence is going to be on the plan? Is that where you have all the trees marked with orange tags? They're, they're the trees that just they're dead. Oh, okay. But they there's no fencing back. that's going there. Where's it going from? So it will go here. Essentially no, all the way across here. And then all the way across here. Yeah, but doesn't the fencing have to go around the pool? 
uh, our understanding was that well, the there's an part. auto cover on the pool that the auto cover uh, now supports. Uh, That's correct. That was updated in the building code. Um, yeah. Have you confirmed with the building department since you know this was constructed in 2021? Because that was a code update in 2023. So I don't know if your pool is I, like I. You would just have to reconfirm that because okay. I'm not sure given the timeline. Okay. Well, it, it was certain it was part of the conversation we had, which is why we drew, drew up the plans on the sense that that we because again there is an auto cover underneath that temporary the, the winterized cover that's there. And what type of um, fence is this? Yeah, uh, it's a six to eight feet aluminium metal fence. Like bars you can see through or solid. Uh, or... Find a picture if that's helpful. The wrought iron looking fence. Yes. And, and it's, wanna, it's all our problems. The well, eight boxes that are set up. That's a, that's a plan. Well, we do own. have right. we do have height requirements right. for fencing, so it's just eight feet is only allowed when you're not in the setback. So or for deer sure fences. The, or if you're beyond the setback. Yeah. You yeah. can put eight feet. Just want to make sure whatever fence wins. Even along the front. Yes. You're only allowed four feet around the front. Yeah, I thought along the front only four feet. Not if you're beyond the setback. Yeah. So if the setbacks, uh, this is the. Uh, what is this zone? Um, 45 feet. So it's 48 by 60. So 60 wide by 48 tall. The so four feet high. Yeah. So, but Luke, like if you were within 45 feet of this front yard right here, you could actually start an eight foot fence beyond it mm -hmm. if you chose to. And But yes, you're right. Deer fencing, you can do differently than that, but you could actually start a fence that high. I mean, you wouldn't want it, but. So some really good points on the board. Any... Yeah, that's the actual thing. Okay. Yeah. Does anyone have questions? I'm really valuable. Mm -hmm. No, I, I mean, I think the shed is where we're hanging. I think, again, just to reiterate the same point, like we did two projects at the same time. The second one, far more significant than the first. Everything we did on the second was in code, was built with the tenant's approval. I, I, I wish I, I had the same trust I placed in one contractor was equal with the trust that I placed, I placed in the other, but it just doesn't. So I, I don't want this to suggest that we flagrantly uh, like try and skirt the rules, because we didn't. Like our track record is is in, in other areas at exactly the same time, I think is good. So off the northwesterly end of the pool, I'm sorry. I mean, would you uh, would you be comfortable adding it? I mean, obviously, we're not gonna be able to give you liberty on something you didn't do. But I mean, I, going forward in the future, anything constructed off the northwesterly end of the pool is going to be problematic. Yeah, I'm fine to, and we talked about this before. Understanding that the line gets reset, I'm fine to put a letter on file, have it affidavit by um, uh, by David. Um, and then ensure that that's transferred with any sale of the property. And I'll, I'll assume the risk that that's going to cost me money if the person who's buying the property doesn't want to accept that. Well, could we? I don't know if we even need that. Does anyone on the board think would would want that? Or I don't. No, okay. no I, yeah. I, I, I think I think we're all fine with yeah. that. Okay. And again, I'm more than happy to do that. In the Jessica. No. Any other conditions people think would be relevant? No. David, any? No. Does the town do anything with this pool contractor to serve him a notice of you better not do this again? So we've looked into it because, um, as I said yeah. in my memo, we've had many issues with this contractor. Um, our attorneys have advised that there isn't any, like, we can't stop them from working in this town. We've, um, as I said in my memo, we had a meeting with yeah. him about a year ago. and. It has been better since that meeting. Um, okay. Yep. No, yeah, I agree. It's that. gotten better. Okay. No, I don't have any more. And, and you know, we thank the board obviously for the way they looked this application and the questions they asked and the fact that they took that thought into account by the thing that's occurred here. Is there anyone on um, virtually? No. Nope. Sir. No, oh, virtually. Okay. Anyone here for or against? No one here. No one virtual. <laughs> <laughs>
So we'll move into executive session. So only the business members, session. I mean, business session. So only the members seated can vote. Um, Thank you for your time and consideration. Can you stop sharing the screen? Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Let me close it. Does it go off? No, it doesn't. So, yes. Rich characters, I would recommend we grant the variance um, provided that the shed is demolished or at least moved within the setback. When you do make a motion officially, I would recommend that you all have a discussion about how this doesn't set any sort of precedent yeah. for you know illegal work done by contractors just yeah. because... This, okay. this contractor is a repeat offender that we have had yeah. many issues with. I come back to the point that on all these applications, we have to look at them as if on day one we would have granted it. I mean, because otherwise it encourages to, bad behavior. I do think you have to know that I mean, it, it's bad behavior. Otherwise, I, I think, you know, we run into an issue where people think we're just going to turn our heads and, yeah. and grant everything. And the background is helpful. For that point of view, so it's not like some, not like the homeowner was trying to right. no, it's, hide, but like skirt the law. So it is helpful having the background there. Right, it's the contractor, you know, that has bad behavior that would. I mean, if we were to have seen this come before us before constructed, I think I would have considered saying something like that. I would move to grant the variance on the condition that the non-conforming shed is removed or at least moved to another location on the property where it's not in the setbacks. And that due to the location of the house on the lot and the open nature of the lot where there is minimal screening, minimal trees, that there is challenges of placing the pool in a different location on the property because there would be no other really natural screening for it other than the house. And that's how I would probably phrase it at the time if we we're looking at it before construction. I think at the time, a problem you would have with that application is why don't you make it, you know, foot and a half shorter? I mean, I know, like, but come on. <laughs> I mean, I know we're trying to do it here. So I come back to the point that Jessica had about making it a lot more conforming. I, I believe that's, yeah. I, yeah. if there wasn't something on this lot to make it more conforming, I, I'd say I, tear I it out. Issue. If it wasn't for the shed, I wouldn't know what to, you know. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Because let them worry about it with the contractor. Yeah, that's my view as well. I mean, that's between the two of them. I mean, rotating the pool seems not difficult either as an option for this all happen. Yeah, so I think the only way they would get it is if they're making it more conforming. Okay. And we've used that as grounds before. I mean, when we're on something on the line like this, because an objective of zoning is to make everything more conforming over time. Um, and and you look at the materiality of the non-conforming. You know, this was ten feet. Would be a bigger issue than it being. That's what I'm saying. Coming back to too is like the sheds are very noticeable to neighbors. This yep. pool is completely flush to the ground without yep. a deck or anything around right. it. So a neighbor's not gonna notice if it's a foot and a half this way or that way versus this right. gigantic three shed in, right next to the line. Well, and there's also the stone wall also blocking some good degree of visibility for it too. It's pretty. There's like some sort of evergreen trees in the middle there. Yeah, no, it's, it's not. pretty. It's um, in the back. Even in the winter, yeah, it's screened it very is. heavily. Yeah. yeah. So that that screening is on, I think, the other property. So yeah, if, it's not If there. the screening is integral to your approval, they want a condition that should that screening go away, that it have to be replaced on their property. It would be something to consider. I don't know how we would well, enforce that. Not if you take down the shed road. completely. No, the screening. I always have that issue with adding. Oh, yeah. For screen. Mm -hmm. I feel like it sets future home up owners up for fix. The planning is only future loves to add screening conditions. I mean, I, 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 it, it is important, though, like that this is screened between the two properties. 
Um, because there is so much happening so close to the line there with all the I mean, they don't have everything on the plane, but you can see they have this big pipe thing. There's there's a lot right against that line. Like if there wasn't screening, there'd be a Perhaps lot just right saying against that, that line. even though it's not on their property, like maintaining the existing level of screening. And we can't without... make it contain something on the main. Well, I mean, I mean it would just be if the neighbors cut it down, it would be on yeah. the other home. But you're not going to replant 40 foot high trees. No, no they but. They would grow. No, that's usually. What happened? Because we we have had this before. You could say comparable level of screening. No, I'm saying comparable would be like all asking a lot. Like sufficient. It's, that's what I'm saying. I don't. I don't I'm really. saying like how do we put the onus on you? And then yeah, decide what's I think sufficient. It's, I think it's hard. To this before, um, there was actually a, a case somewhat recently where there was a condition from like 2010 where um, a neighbor had cut down trees that were supposed to be left in perpetuity and i mean you just you replace it with a similar species and it's not going to be the same height maybe for 10 years right. but you you replace it and but isn't that really the job the job of planning and zoning and wetlands and no because they wouldn't go get a permit to cut these trees and they're not going to come back again to mm -hmm. do the permit hopefully like it's i mean that's not a requirement it was just something yeah. to consider right now i think i think adding a screening element should the existing screening go away is I wouldn't object to it. I mean, it's, it's I just don't know how. I, I think it makes sense in principle to do that because, like, like you, that's an important thing to me. I just don't know how we would say like what it's supposed to be. Like, I I don't want to make it so vague that it's impossible down the road for someone to know know what we were trying to say in our decision. And I don't want to put a burden on someone where they got to spend one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, arguably, because they have a neighbor mad at them and now the trees are cut down. You Maybe know? something like a natural growth. Screen of sufficient height, at least eye height. Yeah. So I mean, we six do foot have, high. Yeah, I mean you could say that to a a fence scene, height. You could say a, a a visual buffer of the pool that was uh, of at least six feet in height is yeah always maintained. Other yeah. than a fence, like a yeah yeah. I put so that. I think that's more yeah. realistic. Yeah. Landscape mm -hmm. screen. Yeah, landscape screen. Huh. That's six feet. Yeah. yeah. Landscape screening of, of six feet high, creating a visible, yeah. a visual buffer. Yeah, I think that would be. That's not going to be so likely to jeopardize a future home. Home. No, I think like, the key is also to consider. You know, financial hardships shouldn't be considered. And if yeah. someone were to purchase this house, they are purchasing a home with you know a variance that was granted. To put in so the six foot high row of bushes along that property line. It's, it's, it's going to be a couple thousand dollars. It's going to be five thousand dollars. It's not a huge, a million plus house. It's not onerous. Are we in agreement that we're looking to have something put in there also regarding the shed? The the well, the shed obviously, right? But the errors that brought this forward. I mean, like Christy had mentioned, that you know this really. So is I think neglect would, I think or it's negligence just, on the part of the contractor? I don't think that necessarily supports like the grounds for our decision. I think the point is that. Um, no, I'm not saying it's grounds for a decision. I'm saying it's just something putting in the file that supports like, OK, this came to us. OK, yeah. where you know what? There's negligence here. Should we have is that? it already part of the record at this point, though? So I was wondering, I, maybe in the minutes or. I just recommend that when you do make an official motion that you clarify why this case is different Unique, than yeah. other cases, just because, you know, in the future, if there is, you know, a contractor with ill will that doesn't want to follow the rules and they see this case, why, what incentive do they have to follow right. the rules right. versus not? That's, right. that's uh, my concern. I, mean, my I think in this case, what's unique that is that it's extremely well screened from the neighboring properties and it's ground level with no patio around it and that they have a, a very large shed that they make moving to make it more compliant and then i think we just say like all the applications this is non-precedental and um while we can't consider it as grounds for the decision we of course you know heard the property owner's expression regarding you know he was not coming out here to um he, he didn't go out there intending to avoid the law this right. was accidental i don't know what else we can do to we've had this happen a handful of times we had where the house is a little too tall or i mean uh, every time it comes up we always think like 
after the fact, what do we do? I only remember one time where we told them to pull something out and it's because they put the pool filter right next to like the neighbor's window, you know, and it's it yeah. just driving the neighbor nuts listening to it. You know, it had like a real effect on someone. So we said, no, pull up your patio and move it. And I don't think this is accidental. I, I think that, you know, I'm, I, I feel differently. I, you know, I'm not saying that it was the homeowner, but I think you've got a contractor here he doesn't that care. doesn't care and he's getting away with it. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, I think this is signature pool, if I'm not mistaken. And I see them all over town. Well, I think and, the recourse know. there is that there's obviously going to be some sort of lawsuit between the property owner and but him. He's once he gets his approval. Well, you know, I kept what I say here. It's speculation, but what damages does he? He's still and expended money on a high yeah. rain day than he still another. The whole septic system. People like he has yeah. damages it already. To move a septic system. He had to move the septic system. He had to redo yeah. the drainage. Yeah. I mean, he I mean, has significant. And this, and this was all. Cost. But this was all at the because of the negligence of this pool company. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, mean it, it's it's it's. Yeah, it's very costly for the homeowners. And this is a yeah. very different fact pattern than the one we saw where some towns count the coping and some don't. So it seems excusable to me that, you know, if you're a contractor and you're doing work in eight towns and only one of the towns counts the coping and right. the size of the pool, and that happens to be New Canaan, you could accidentally make that mistake. But that pool had permits and stuff. It was This is like to build a whole pool with no permits. With it's, no kind permits. Of, it's kind of amazing. Yep. I'm not kind of amazing. It's very amazing. It's like a reputable company. It's not mm -hmm. like some guy standing on the corner. Right. I don't want to know if I'm using the word reputable or not, but I'm saying it's a company that's it's a real company. It's not like he hired his cousin to do it. But that, again, is... But that's in the back of my mind, too. This pool company started to do this in a lot of instances in multiple towns. But they like in the back of my mind, I start thinking how many lawsuits might they be facing potentially or claims from homeowners who are going through this in multiple towns. And would there actually be financial resources to eventually pay for the cost of remediation? I, yeah, that would I have be no a concern. Idea. I don't know if you know, I, don't know. I have no idea. I don't know if licensing I has anything to do with it. I doubt insurance would cover this cost, pool companies. This cost care. associated. Yeah, no, I'm saying like the pool company's insurance. Yeah. The pool company's, the pool company's insurance. liability it's insurance. Oh, I how it would cover it's their error they yeah. in, but yeah. insurance to not get the permit that's wouldn't you think against. that if they didn't act in the ordinary expected way of doing i have doing no idea i'm not an insurance that the, attorney i don't i, I have to not. deal with insurance a lot for my job and i was like i would not get insurance defense on that one. so the i mean but this cost of one here is losing his shed yeah he had to pay joe Rucci. He, he's not very expensive but that's no. cool. yeah <laughs> So, um, have you have you been writing down some notes on? So I have um the notes for the conditions and um like I don't need to specifically write anything down for the precedent. It's more just I want it in the recording. On the well, no, I think record. we could put that in the decision too. Yeah, yeah we can. I mean, because and... then someone actually sees in the decision if they pull those things. Someone doesn't necessarily pull all the meeting minutes of things. So I guess if anyone else have anything else to say? No. 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 Okay. I can make a motion and then maybe we'll talk it through and if someone wants to add to it or change it and then mm -hmm. it's kind of long. And maybe... Do you want me to read the conditions I have? Okay. Yes. Agree on one yes. Okay, so <laughs> relocate the shed to a conforming location. Or remove it. I mean, we can add that in, but I think that's kind of... Yeah, remove or relocate non-conforming okay. shed. Yeah. And then um, a landscape screening at least six feet in height is maintained in perpetuity to screen the pool from, the drain, from adjacent property owners. I think we should be clear that we're not requiring them to put that in now. That would include existing, existing screen. Because okay. I don't want it to okay. be, because I can imagine someone reading that thinking they need to put that in. And we're only talking about the screening um, behind so the wall. On the one well, where's, side. The, where's the plan? So we well, can... That's on the north. Is that the north? Okay. I can specify to say to screen the pool from um, the north. From the adjacent. So okay. that the pool and any pool decking. They're not allowed pool decking. So pool and pool coping is not visible from the north. 
northerly property. Northern property. Northern, northerly property. And that's natural screening, not a stockade fence or something. I said landscape screening. Um, you may want to say natural. Natural, natural landscape okay. screening. Does anyone natural know if that's really north? Yes, yeah, yeah, it is. There's an arrow on the plan. Yeah. One um, of the plans in there, right here. Yeah. Oh, on this one. Yeah. Yeah. I used to have a ruler I'd bring to these, which is really cool because it would like scale to the plans, but it doesn't work anymore because you don't have like full size plans. Yeah. Like architects used to come with them, so I would. I bought one and. So that's what you have so far, Sarah. Yes, yeah, that's what. Right. Okay. Natural. Is Wait, okay. is, am I saying a natural? The, screen I know or? natural doesn't mean plants. Natural to me, can we say? Landscape is the standard of planning zoning to say a landscape buffer. I think landscape landscape is buffer. Is buffer. I, I would say natural landscape screening. Okay, that's fine. We're getting a little Natural right. landscape screening that's at least six feet high. Yes. To block the view of the pool from the northerly property. I would recommend saying screen because in the future, if you say block and then screen, the okay, the screen. say that they can see the pool. Okay, the screen. Yeah. Okay, the screen. And that the shed be re relocated either. Removed or relocated. Removed or relocated. So there's not any of the setbacks. Yep. And that the grounds for granting this would be. Um, that they're making the property more conforming. And that this property is very unique in that um, the location of the stone wall makes it appear this is further from the property line than it in fact is. And the screening obscures it from the property line. And I think the house is already set back. Yeah, like, and the house is set way back in the property. Did you write those down? This is going to be a long motion. So, I mean, it, it's recorded in our, our minute taker. We'll right. do that. Okay, so I would move to make a motion that we grant the variance on the grounds that they're going to remove the non conforming shed or make it otherwise conforming by taking it outside the property setback. That um, the property is unique with the house situated very far to the rear of the property. And the only location to screen the house from the front yard would be the location of the pool where it is now. That someone looking at the property would presume that this pool is further from the property line than it is because of the location of the stone wall. That there's heavy, existing heavy screening between the neighbor's property and this pool. So the non-conforming nature of this pool is not visible from any adjacent property. Um, I'd also note that like any zoning board of appeals decision, this is a non-precedental decision. And we look at each property uniquely to see whether or not it meets the requirements for variance. Um, and we view this as if this was not an after the fact variance provided. Um, we do understand and we always try to be sympathetic towards towards facts that are presented to us. And here there are facts presented to us showing that um, this was not something that the property owner intended to bring upon himself. Anything else? I would only add to that there is, we're gonna impose the requirement that the existing natural landscape screening, um, should there be any alterations to it over time that six feet high uh, replacement uh, natural landscape screening be installed um, of whatever variety of plants to maintain uh, that level of screening. I would amend my motion and add that to it. On the north side. On the, no, on on the, the north side. side. Yeah. Right. Um, do we want to put a condition on it, the fencing be the type of fencing he showed us? Across the front of the property, no. I think it's already on the okay. lot, so right. it seems okay. Pretty secure at that point. Okay. Even. Anything <laughs> else? Someone want to second that? Ah, uh, Cardin second. Tashin in favor. Which carry two in favor? Cardin in favor. Dell in favor. Potter in favor. Okay. 
Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I think we thought he had to sit outside during it. <laughs> Maybe you can take the tension. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So the minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So to the minutes. Yeah. Oh yeah. I I wasn't here for that meeting. Okay. So. I can't vote. Can I make okay. a motion to approve? Okay. Rich Carrot to write the minutes and make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second that motion. We can just do all in favor. All in favor. Okay. okay. <laughs> Looking at this, that has to have been the fastest ever meeting recorded on. Yes, it was. <laughs> From minute 716. <laughs> what? Wait, did it say that? Included 716. Adjourned at 716. Oh yeah. Oh, last oh, time. Sorry, oh, last meeting. I made a motion to adjourn now. Oh yeah. Okay. I move to adjourn now. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know. Do we have to all say we're in favor?